Glory. Can we stand Glory. on our Glory. feet in solidarity? Hallelujah. Because we are the height. And we believe and know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly all that we could ever ask or think. Whatever you are in need of, his answer is yes. yes. Hallelujah. And all he wants is your yes. So can we just say, Hallelujah. God, we love you. God, we adore you. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. Yes. We thank you for the victory, oh God. We thank you for the victory already. If you want to wave your hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We won't let rocks cry out for us, Lord. Hallelujah, oh glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you. Hallelujah, we give you glory, hallelujah. So this song just says, God said it, and I believe it. How many believe that? Say, God said it. God said it. I believe it. I believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, the Lord, he's everything to me. Yes, he said he would my comfort be. I believe it. God said it. I believe it. I'm gonna take him at his word. Oh, the Lord, he's everything to me. Yes, he said he would my comfort be. God said it, I believe it, I'm gonna take him at his word, I am standing on the promises of Jesus, I know he'll never let me down. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. 
I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. God said 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 it. I believe it. I'm gonna take him at his word. Hallelujah. If you know that God said it, if he promised you one thing, you can stand on his word. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Because God said it. And I believe it. He won't fall short of his word. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you for your word. Because it never returns void. It accomplishes that what it was sent out to do. Hallelujah. And because of that, it is constantly living and breathing. Hallelujah. It never dies. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So this song says, Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth. A holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Sent down from glory. Sent down from glory. Many things. Many things you were on earth. A holy king, a carpenter. One more you time. Say bread word, of heaven, yeah. Bread of heaven. Sit down. From glory, Sit down from glory. Say many things you were, many things you were on earth. A, a holy king, king, a carpenter. You are the say awesome word. ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, gentle redeemer. Say God with us, yeah. God with us, the, the living truth, truth and, and what a friend we have in you. Say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, yeah. That's what we call you. Manger born, manger born, but on a tree. You died to save you, man. Bati, you are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you, yeah. That's what we call you. Manger born, manger born, but on a tree. You died to save you, man. Bati. Jesus, 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 that's what we 
We call you. That's what we call you. Say, Major Boy, Major Boy, but on a tree you died to save humanity. You are the living word. 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 Word. You are the living word. Say you are the living word. You are the living oh, word. you are the living word. You are the living word. Every promise that you've spoken, Lord, you are the word. it shall not return void because you are, you are the living word. Oh, say you are the living word. Say you are the living word. Say you are the living word. Oh, you are the living word. You are the living word. Hallelujah. 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 Can somebody just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. hallelujah, Jesus for my healing, Jesus for my deliverance, Jesus, hallelujah, because I love him, Jesus, hallelujah, because I'm grateful, Jesus for everything that I need, Jesus over my finances, Jesus over my loved ones, Jesus for all of my cares and concerns, hallelujah. Jesus over everything. It just means that Jehovah saves. When you call that name, you're really making a confession, like Sharon said, that you're confessing that Jesus saves, that he's able, hallelujah, that God, hallelujah, can save me from all of my afflictions, can save me from all of my trouble, can save me from all of my challenges, hallelujah. All my situations are covered by Jesus. Can you call his name and say, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you, major boy, but on a tree, you died to save humanity, you are the living word, Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. That's what we call you, major boy, but on a tree, you died to save humanity, you are the living. One more time, say Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the Then you say, say oh, when you don't know what to do but moan. Moan with us, say, Oh, hey, oh, 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 o
You are the living word. Hallelujah. You know, he just didn't leave a word in the book for us to read, but he is the living word. Hallelujah. He is the embodiment of the word. And, and, and not only that, that he chose to come and live on the inside of me so that the word can be on the inside of me so that I can hide the word inside my heart so that I might not sin against him. Hallelujah. You are the living word. You are the living word. Oh, bless your name, God. You are the living word. Yay. You are the living word. Hallelujah. You are the living word. Praise the Lord. You Hallelujah. Are the living word. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we come together today because He is the living word. And it's that word that created the very heavens and the earth, the word that caused him to raise up from the grave, and the word that can sustain our lives. And we thank God for the living word. So thank you. I'm going to ask you to take out your Bibles, if you would. Hallelujah. Just take out your Bibles. And if you have your Bible, it is, um, you can use your, use your Bible. Or if you have your phone, you know, these days we use our phones for our Bibles. Amen. The old folks would say, what y'all doing? Why all y'all folks got phones out in church? Amen. Hallelujah. It took us a minute. We used to, the ushers used to tell the kids, put that phone away. But nowadays, you can't, now you got to tell the adults to put the phone away. Because we have our word. Amen. It's a good thing. And I thank God for it. Amen. I want you to turn with me to a very familiar passage. Uh, John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And, and it's very familiar because it, um, it's the passage, it's, it's, that is the chapter where it says in verse 16, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? So we know it very well. But before we get to that part there, I want you to just, um, I want you to just take a moment um, and, and look at for me verses 1 through, uh, 1 through 7, amen? 1 through 7. And it says this, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Amen. And I want to, uh, I want to just remind and, and call your attention. Um, you don't have to turn there with me if, if you don't want, but I'm going I'm to go back to the book of, uh, to the book of Luke for just one moment. And, and I'm going to look down in the ninth chapter, uh, ninth chapter, and I'm going to start at the 28th verse for for those of you, if would maybe just take some notes and maybe uh, look at these passages when you go home, because I think it's important. Um, we're about to embark upon something that I, I consider as a pastor to be very challenging, um, and it kind of centers around what we're going to be doing for our Bible study. So I, I did ask you to please make sure that you get a copy of, of the Bible study coming up for this week. Uh, we're going to we're going to look in a couple of different places to endeavor to ask some, answer some questions that were raised in Bible study, amen, um, uh, by, by, by a few of us, amen, by a few of us who have, who have raised uh, similar, or almost the same kind of question, and so we're going to, we're going to take a dive in, y'all, would y'all say that with me, dive in, amen. dive in, and we're going to, uh, we're going to endeavor to, to look at some of these things, and I may have to call you all to an assembly here at the in the, in the uh, sanctuary, too, um, at, at some point, because I really want to engage us 
for a, a few weeks so that we can, we can thoroughly understand some things that will help us kind of move forward. Amen. But I want you to, I want you to uh, just turn your attention with me for one second to Luke. Keep your hand in John because that's where we'll be uh, taking a message from. But by way of introduction, I want to remind you of this particular time when uh, Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. And it says in Luke 9 and 28 that now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that Jesus had said that he took Peter, John, and James and went up on a mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men walked, talked with him who were Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke, hallelujah, of his decree, I mean, of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened that as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles, those are tents, right? One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. Let, let, me, let, me, let me point that out again, not knowing what he said, because he was really asleep. While they were saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And, and, and a voice came out of the cloud. Now, you all remember this because it's the same voice that came out in, in the baptism, amen, in, of, of Jesus. And it said here, uh, the voice came out and said, this is my beloved son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one in those days of any things they had seen. I want to tell you that from that passage, it just uh, it, it hits me that Peter, James, and John, who were kind of the, what we consider to be the inner circle of Jesus, they were having a very spiritual experience. They were having a very spiritual experience. And, and just like the disciples would, in, in most cases, the disciples found themselves with Jesus and Jesus was at his work, but the disciples were tired out and they were asleep. But when they woke up, they, they recognized that they were on the mount and something was strange. It wasn't the ordinary situation that they had been used to and accustomed to. They were, they were witnessing something that had happened that they could not explain with their own human language. And, and Peter opened his mouth. It's always Peter, isn't it? It seems like it's always Peter. Peter opened his mouth and he said, Master, he said, let me make a tabernacle for, for you and for Moses and for Elijah. But he had no idea what he was actually saying, right? Well, it, just like Peter in the other instance in Matthew chapter 16 where he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when he said that, Jesus said that, Peter, I, I got to tell you that you did not get that from your own repository of knowledge, but you have gotten that by divine inspiration, by the spirit of the living God. Would y'all say this with me? It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. And, and the, in, the, the interesting part for me today, and I hope I'm, I, I got good time. I'm not going to keep you too long. But I want to do by way of introduction, before we start to modify our Bible studies for the next about three weeks uh, or, or so, we, you know, we're going, to, we're going to catch up into chapter 12. But before we go to chapter 12, I got to take a hiatus and kind of get us into this very place where, where, where some of the questions of your hearts can actually be addressed and I needed to start here in John chapter 3 because that's where good Christians always start we, we we learn this verse before we learn almost anything else that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And, and we can rehearse it. How many folks know that by heart? You know the verse by heart. You can almost tell folks when you, when, when you go, uh, if God said, God so loved the world, y'all can, you can finish off the verse, right? Amen. 
But, 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 but I want to tell you what a precursor, what caused this particular instance to happen? Why did Jesus have to actually recite these words? And, and the Bible says with us, and you'll follow me in your word for just a little bit. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees. Hallelujah. That's the first thing we got to really pay attention to, that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, and he was a ruler of the Jews. That means that, 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 that he was not, he was of the establishment. He was of the modern day. You know what I mean, that, that it's good for uh, the disciples to know that you've got to make touch with not only the, uh, the, the, the folks in church. You know what I'm talking about, how we like to stay among each other and we like to talk, religious talk among each other. We're not afraid to lift our hands in, in, in church, hallelujah, because that's what church folk do. Am I right about it? Y'all talk to me for just a minute. We, we, we all right. We can dance in church. We can yell and holler and scream in church. And we can act funny. Some folk like to even run around the sanctuary in church. And, and you can hear folks say glory. And you can hear folks say hallelujah. And you can hear folks, you know, watch folks lift their hands. And we do all kinds of religious expressions in church. But I dare you to go in public and lift your hands. I dare you to go downtown and stand on the corner and just wave your hands and watch folk look at you and think you're crazy. I dare you to get stopped at a red light and put your window down and say something like, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. I, I dare you to go out in the midst of things that, that where people are and, and act like you know Jesus. Oh, y'all talk with me for a minute. Because we're real safe in here, but we got to get out of this safety closet right here and go on the outside and express, let folk on the outside see that we love Jesus. Amen. Let folks understand that we love Jesus. That's how we, that's how we minister. This, this, this Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. That meant he was from the government. It was the Jewish government, but nonetheless, he was from the government. And it says, this man came to Jesus by night. Now, you know, there's many arguments as to why he came by night. Some people would say that he came by night because he did not want to be recognized. He didn't want anybody else to see that he was coming because the Pharisees were not, they weren't believers in Jesus at this point. But there are other, there are other versions that, that really kind of tell the story that he actually came by night because Jesus was so occupied by day that he wanted to go at a time when he could capture Jesus by himself. And, and get him because he had some questions to ask. How many folks have some questions to ask of Jesus? How many folks, if you met him today, you say, Lord, I got some questions for you. I don't understand some things. I want to know how this all works. And, and, and the good thing about this is when the man came to Jesus by night, said to him, he said, Rabbi. And, and that was strange for a Pharisee because a Pharisee would have been in opposition to Jesus. And instead, he called him rabbi, he, he, which meant that I know you're a good teacher. I'm going to respect your title. I'm going to respect your office. I'm going to respect your, your position in this, in this whole walk of life. He said, rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Look at this. Come from God. Y'all excited like I am? That, that, that you, why are you not shouting then? Well, you know what I mean. But, but, but here's the issue that, that this man, this Nicodemus, who would have ordinarily on any other day been a, a, apart from Jesus, recognized him and said, we know who you are. You are sent by God. He was basically making his confession that we, we know who you are. And he didn't use the term. He said, didn't come, he, he didn't come Arlington and say this. He didn't say, I know who you are. He said, we know who you are, which means that they had been talking about him in the room. Come on, somebody. That means that when they got in their chambers, that regardless of what they would say on CNN and what they, would say, what they wouldn't say on MSNBC, they would get out in the public, they would get in their private space and say, there's something about this Jesus that we just can't explain. He said that we, we know that you are a teacher come from God. I'm so grateful for Nicodemus, somebody who had boldness enough to come up in, in, in the front of God. And he says, because no one can do these signs uh, that you do unless God is with him. We've been watching you. We've been studying you. We've been talking about you, Jesus. 
Jesus answered him, and don't, don't you marvel at this? Where Jesus stops and he answers him, and he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you. He said, let me tell you something. Truly, I say to you that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, now the interesting part about this text is, is that I don't see where Nicodemus actually expressed his question. That Jesus answered the question that Nicodemus never really even asked. That, that, that Jesus has a way of knowing what's on your heart in the first place. And when you come to him, he's already prepared with your answer before you even get in his presence. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That, that if he'll answer Nicodemus, surely he'll answer us. Y'all love Jesus? Do you all love Jesus? That, that, that if you love him, he's already, he's already pre prepared and positioned to answer your question. You just have to get in his presence and ask. And sometimes you can't go in the midst when the crowd is thick and when everybody else is, is fighting for his attention. Sometimes you got to get him all alone in the night and say, Jesus, I want to know some things. He said, I say to you that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus then didn't waste any time. He says, let me ask you a question. He says, now that you bring that up, how can a man be born uh, when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Tell me what you're talking about, Jesus. I don't understand these things that you're talking about. That th this, is, this is actually, I, I know you can do some incredible things, but I, I, I don't see how you could do something. like. I've seen, I've heard about all the miraculous things that you've done. I've heard that you heal folks. I, I heard that you can command demons to be quiet. I heard that you can command the sea. I, I've heard some things, there's chatter and there's noise all over the culture that you can do miraculous things but how can a man get back in his mother's womb and be born the the second time Jesus answered in verse 5 he said most assuredly or truly I say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God and and then he told him he said let me let me be more specific that that which is born of flesh is flesh but that which is born of spirit of spirit is spirit it's a spiritual thing it's not just your ordinary fleshly uh, uh, situation and 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 it's it's from this that that I think uh, we need to just look for about the next five to seven minutes I want I want to just go over some things with you that that as he uh as he pondered, really Nicodemus was coming to him asking the question that all of us ought to ask at some point in our lifetime. How do I make it into the kingdom of God? How do I how, how do I become he he was basically saying that, you know what, I, I've watched and studied our, our our system and I've watched and and looked at how we have declared how to do things in the Sanhedrin. I've watched the Pharisees make up rules and laws and those things. But there's got to be more. How many folks out there would say there's got to be more to this thing? There's got to be more than just what we than just coming to church. There's got to be more than just kind of lifting up your hands. There's got to be something greater that, that I understand about God than just these ordinary things. I need to know. I want to go deeper. I want to understand greater. I want to reach farther. I want to understand more comprehensively what my life is all about. Jesus, while I got your attention right now, I need you to tell me some things that will make an impact in my life. Have you ever had a conversation like that with Jesus to say, God, I need to know you better. I need to go deeper in fellowship with you. I need to understand some, some stuff that's going to that's going to change my life. Jesus said that you cannot be a part of this kingdom unless you have a spiritual rebirth. So I want to take you back for just a couple minutes. Um, looks like we'll even finish early today, but I, I want to take you back for just a couple of minutes because if you go back in Genesis uh, chapter 1, you, we find out in Genesis chapter 1, you know, down through verse 26 through about verse 28, that, that God made us in his image and in his likeness. 
that, that God made us in his image, in his likeness. And then we find out in John chapter 4 that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so if we're made in his image and in his likeness, that the likeness of God is not that likeness that we are accustomed to when we walk the ground, when we move about. Hallelujah. This image and likeness has something. Y'all say with me, it's a spiritual thing. It's not just your ordinary uh, physical, uh, you know, stuff that we get n normally get to see. But God is taking us deeper. God is re make, making us go further. He's trying to help us to understand that we are like him, that we are, we, we are composed. Now, I, I want to straighten out somebody real quick, and we're going to do this in Bible study. So I need you to all sign in. I don't want when your phone rings and you go ding, 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 and, and the Bible study starts to you know, the, you get the notification for Bible study, push the link, and let's be together. This is going to be some critical stuff. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to, I don't want you to be on the outskirts. We're going to talk about some, some critical stuff that we need to know to minister in this day culture. Amen? And when you get yourself equipped with this information, you're going to be able to challenge your children who say that I don't believe in God, who, who says that, that, that you know, that, 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 that he's the supreme because I'm a God myself. That's what I'm getting off of social media. We're going to get you prepared to be able to address some folks that call themselves God. God made us in his image and in his likeness, but he didn't make us God. I don't want to get excited today. He didn't make us God. He, he made us in his image and in his likeness. And I believe that, that we, if you would read the Bible and understand the context of which, you would understand that he made us in his image and likeness so that we could communicate with him. You see, we can communicate with each other because we have the same kind of language. We have the same kind of life experience. We have the same, we got the same foundation and the same framework that we, that we exist in. But, but God is saying that if you're going to hang out with me, you're going to have to know what it's like to be a spirit. This is what he was telling Nicodemus. He said, first of all, you have to be born physically. And I, it, it always, mar I marvel at this fact that nobody who has not come to the earth realm first, you know, uh, can make it into the kingdom of heaven. And I'm, I'm excited about making it into the kingdom of heaven. Do, does anybody else? Is there anybody else? I ain't rushing to get there. Yeah. Amen, because I still got work to do. That's it. But, 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 but I'm excited because God made some promises. God made some promises. Revelation 21, he said that I'm going to recreate the, the heavens and the earth. I, I told some folks... Uh, at, at the funeral that we just did, I told some folks that, that we're not going to just float around with a heart on clouds. God said that we're go he's going to bring the new Jerusalem down here. And it's going to be like a restored Eden, which means that everything that we ever desired, everything that we ever needed would be in perfect proportion. God would make, you won't have any needs. And he, he even gave us this kind of preview, a, a, a sneak peek. He said that, that you won't have any more reason to cry. There won't be any more pain. There won't be any more sorrow. He said the former things have passed away and I'm going to make all things new. And, and don't, how many folk like new stuff? If, if somebody were to tell you that I'm going to give you a new car or you could take this old one, I bet you every one of you would say, give me the new keys. And if somebody said, I'm, I'm going to give you the keys to this, either this old house over here or this new house, y'all would say, never mind the old house, I want the new house. Give me those keys because we like new stuff. Amen. And God said, but when I make it, your walls won't get dirty. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying right now. That, that there won't be any more creaks and cracks. There won't be any more, there won't be any more of those critters that kind of make way into your house. Come on, talk to me right now because y'all know what I, it ain't just me. It's those some, them, them little things you got to spray every now and again and try to get them out of your house. It won't be any more of those anymore because they, they they'll be in perfect proportion. God is going to make 
make everything brand new where nothing can get in that's not supposed to be there and you're going to be in perfect harmony ain't gonna be no fighting in the house it's not gonna be no more challenge in the house everything will be in perfect harmony y'all hear me right now I'm almost finished with you but I just need you to understand God said no more tears because it won't be no more sorrow when I when I wake up everybody and they come back to life and when we come back and live in the earth together he said that you're not gonna have to worry about your loved ones leaving out and they don't come back anymore because when they come back they're gonna be in perfect proportion God made some promises but he said in order to get in that kingdom you can't just get there in your physical flesh it's a spiritual thing Nicodemus you gotta be born of the water and of the spirit he said and if you're born of the water I believe he meant like with, with John the Baptist he was saying that you got to be re repent because in order for me to make you brand new you got to join my team which means you got to denounce some of the way that you live right now how many folks are bold enough to say that the way that I do it is not the right way I found out some things in the process that that my way was insufficient and so I'm willing to repent I'm gonna turn myself from what it was that I used to do and I'm gonna follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no y'all hear me right yeah my God he said you can't get into the into the kingdom until you're born of the spirit in the book of Thessalonians he said God would sanctify us holy body soul and spirit he helped us to understand that your composition is not just your physical makeup and I want to tell you this and then I'm going to leave you alone because I'm not going to put too much on you at one time but I want to tell you this that God says we're too concerned with physical things yeah. and we don't take time for spiritual stuff that the physical things, I don't, I don't know, have, have, have you seen, you've been to it? Well, we have, because we, we just laid to rest our sister Mary Ponds. And, and so we've all been to a service of what we call victory and triumph, amen, because they're, they're lifted out of here and they're going home to be with the king. But, 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 but we've been there long enough. We've, we've been to, a, I've been to enough of them this, just in this last two weeks to be able to say that, that man who is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Hallelujah. But, but God said, but if there's hope of a tree, hallelujah, he said, I promise you it will sprout again. That was Jesus' way to say that I'm not going to be in the grave forever. I'm going to get up so that you can get up too. And, and we got to be excited about that thing. And he said, but I need you to understand that when you get up, it's not going to be any more laying down. Y'all, y'all read the record. Just get excited about the fact that we're just biding our time right now and trying to get people to realize that you want entrance into the kingdom because the eternal kingdom will never fail. It will never end and it will never disappoint. I need you to understand that God is going to make the perfect manifestation of you what you're not able to get done in here God said I got plenty for you I'm ready for your gifts I'm ready for the manifestation of all of your beauty you doubted who you were while you were down here but when I show you who you really are come on somebody give me some get, give me some help right now when I show you what I really did with you when I show you who you really are when you're able to look in that mirror and be able to see that you see me hallelujah on you Tell, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, Jesus looks good on you. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, Jesus looks good on you. T tell your neighbor, come on, somebody, Jesus looks good on you. It's a spiritual thing. It's not about this old stuff, these possessions that will rot, where moth and dust doth rot and thieves break through and steal. Don't lay up your treasures on earth where those things happen, but lay up your treasures in heaven where 
moth can and dust can't corrupt. Y'all, y'all hear me right now that God is saying that I need you to focus on heavenly things. Don't worry about what you don't have right now because your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He said, I'll meet your needs according to your riches and glory. I need you to be like Nicodemus. Seek eternal things. Go at the stuff that's going to last. Stop messing with time. Stuff that's going to break and stuff that's going to get old. I don't like rusty stuff. I don't like dusty stuff. I want newness of life and you ought to want newness of life. He said, Nicodemus, you came and you asked the right question. The right question is this, that yes, you must be born again. I mean, you got to be born of the spirit because once you're born of the spirit, you have entered in to the eternal kingdom. I got you in all your challenges. I got you in all your distresses. And when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown. When the battle is over, we shall wear a crown. When the struggle is done, God said that we shall be victorious. When my trouble is over, we shall have victory. That, that wasn't too painless, was it? Painful, was it? I, I didn't keep you too long. That, that wasn't too painful. It's your turn, though. I need you to preach now. Tell your neighbor it's a spiritual thing. Yeah, Pastor, you're talking about a spiritual thing, but but I got pain in my body. Tell me, it's a spiritual thing. And spiritual things have to be handled by way of spirit, Nicodemus. Hallelujah. We got to be careful because lest we learn to fight this battle the wrong way. A lot of times we fight with weapons. When God said Jericho wall comes down with a shout. When God says that ask Jehoshaphat it's the choir that gets the victory not the armed guards hallelujah it's the praises of the children that 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 signify power in the kingdom that we got to recognize that God said that if you're going to have victory you got to start in the spirit so hello spirit what I want to tell you, Nicodemus, is that your flesh and that which is flesh can control that which is flesh, but that which is spirit. You are a living, breathing spirit. God made you that way. Let me just remind you, it was on the day of Pentecost when the disciples had patiently waited. Y'all, it's shouting time right now. I'm going to be quiet so you can shout. But on the day of Pentecost, when the day had fully come, when the time had fully come, that the Spirit came upon all the disciples in that upper room, and they began to speak in tongues, hallelujah. They began to do some strange stuff. They began to know things that they didn't know, Peter, that, that you knew it was Elijah, but you never met Elijah. That you knew it was Moses, and you never even knew it was Moses. Because there's more to you than what walks around. There's more to you than what, what, what is moving, breathing, thinking, that you've got to go deeper and recognize who you are so that you can move in the power of God. It's a spiritual thing. Come on, bow your heads with me. Let me pray for you. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this assembly. And we thank you, oh God, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your peace, Lord God. We thank you that you are a spirit. And we thank you, Lord God, that you poured upon us your spirit so that we would have access to your spirit. And that our spirit container could be filled with the essence of you. 
Help us, O oh God, in these days to come. And as we start to embark upon these, these special lessons, Lord God, that you would show us who we are. Let us come to you like Nicodemus boldly came to you and ask the question. And God, would you answer us? Would you help us to understand whatever it is that, that, that travails in our spirit? so that we might know you in ways we could never have reached in the flesh. We won't try to understand with just the mind because we know that the mind is limited, but the spirit is eternal. Now give us eternal wisdom. Guard us, guide us, direct us, and keep us. And we ask it all in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want you to say something good about your neighbor. I want you to not just say something good about them, but put some power on them. Amen. Back in the day, we used to call it putting mouth on folk. But, but let's put power on them right now. Tell your neighbor, hallelujah. Tell them, be healed, be delivered, prosper. Hallelujah. 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 The glory of God, the blessing of God be on you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak blessing over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That means the enemy just can't come in and have his way with you because the blessing of God is going to fill you, is going to cover you, is going to be your rear guard, and is going to be your, your front lead. Hallelujah. Is going to encamp round about you. That, that, that's what we are speaking spirits. It's a spiritual thing, and we can, we can help each other be victorious in this life. We got to stop hating on each other and start loving on each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and time is out for us who are so pretty. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Us who are so pretty to stop acting so ugly. Take the frown off your face and put a smile on your face. Say, I'm victorious in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to ask the question that if there's anyone in the, in the building today or if you're in the broadcast and, and you don't know the power of the Lord Jesus, Nicodemus made a bold move he came to ask the question that every one of us should ask in our lifetime how do i get into the kingdom of god and the bible says this that if you will confess the name of jesus if you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead the bible declares that you will be saved hallelujah confess that jesus is lord can you do that for me can say just say this with your mouth jesus is lord yeah, he is. Yes, he is. But do you believe it in your heart? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Do you? Do you believe that he got up on the third day? I believe it. Hallelujah. I didn't have to be there to see it. I, I got a witness on the inside that says I was there. I was there. It's as if I had. So it's a spiritual thing. I was there because if I had not been there, then my sins wouldn't be on the cross. And I would still have to pay for them, but I believe it, that he died for me, that he died to set me free. And so if you believe that, the Bible says that you are saved. And if you've made that confession and you're willing to repent from your sins and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've repented of every trying to do things my way. The only the, the way that I know, but I believe that you are a savior who can lead me into truth and into righteousness. Then we want you to contact us. You can reach out to us on our website, www.haskellheightsfbc.com, or you can reach out to us on our mobile app and 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 just push that contact button. It's under Haskell Heights First Baptist Church, and it's nicknamed the Height. Amen. Amen. But if you're in the house today, we, we say that if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, 
We're going to do this. We're going to ask you, just, just lift your hand. Say, Pastor, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Or if it's you that says that, I just want to, I want to be a part of a church experience that where the Lord can watch, guard, and shepherd over me with some loving people, people who care about my soul and my situation, that I want to be a part. Then, then you can either lift your hand now or you can talk to me after the, the service. But, but don't leave here the same the way that you came. Leave here better. Amen? Amen. Now, just one more thing before we give you the benediction. Just look at a neighbor. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to pray for you. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if your neighbor said they're going to pray for you, you pray for them. Okay? So let's go in. We'll take just, just, just real quick, just a 30-second prayer. And if you would just ask God to bless your neighbor right now. So, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord God, seeking a blessing for my neighbor right now, asking you to watch over their, their situations, their souls, Lord God. Watch over their households, everything that concerns them. We ask that you would be involved in their lives. Where they're broken, heal them, Lord God. Make them whole. Lord God, where they are troubled, we ask you, Lord God, that you'll be a bridge over troubled water. I ask that you bless them going out, coming in, Lord God, in their basket and in their store. Bless everything connected to them, Lord God, so that they might be speaking spirits to tell somebody, I know a man who can change your life. Now, God, we ask that you would go with them, Lord God, wherever they go, wherever their feet plant, Lord God, let it be claimed as territory for you. And wherever their hands set to would prosper and, and, and that they would be in health even as their souls prosper. And we ask your blessing to rain down on them now in Jesus' name name we pray amen 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 and what you make happen for others God will make happen for you so go ahead and give God a praise and tell him thank you thank you Lord hallelujah I say this that now may the grace and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest over you rule over you guard you direct you and keep you now henceforth and forevermore and let the redeemed of the lord say amen 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 god bless you we love you have a wonderful day and worship our king hallelujah glory god All deacons, all deacons, before you leave the building, all deacons, would you see me for just about five minutes? All deacons, please meet with me for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Is that soon and very soon?